What's up, everybody? It's Brandon from Box Office Banter, and I didn't know which order I was going to release these in because I was thinking about doing the whole Fast and the Furious franchise through 9 up to this point leading up to X, and before X, doing Hobbs and Shaw. But the more I thought about it, let's do the exact order. Hobbs and Shaw actually came before 9, so obviously I will do that one now since that is the decision that has been made. Sorry if I'm a little lackluster, you guys. Probably won't make a difference, but I'm super tired. Just got off work, and honestly, these Fast and the Furious videos and the long movies, even though I enjoyed the franchise, have kind of been kicking my ass. Hopefully, y'all have been enjoying these, because even though I'm acting like I'm not, because I'm, I'm just tired right now, I have enjoyed the ride quite a bit. It's always fun firing up a big franchise like this, for better or worse, with certain movies. It's just fun diving into all of them and especially dissecting them with these reviews and everybody that does you know watch and all that much appreciated because i love hearing from y'all good shit good shit anyways guys hobbs and shaw the spinoff you know where we really around the time we got to figure out that Dwayne the rock johnson and vin diesel did not quite like each other i remember when that initially was a thing where it was just like, oh, they're trying to hype it up. Kind of like if you remember like Universal Soldier, Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren at the like uh, award show, one of the award shows there were, acted like they were about to get in a fight. They pushed each other and like, oh, there's beef. And then that would make everybody want to see the movie. It was just a bullshit gag. It's almost like that kind of vibe. Everybody was calling bullshit. They were trying to make it seem like Vin Diesel and The Rock were just playing some game to kind of make their characters, you know, seem more badass on screen because they would differ as much as they would get along. And apparently, from everything I saw, unless I forgot about some type of reunion, and obviously The Rock has not returned to the franchise, at least as of now, very, very true. So he ran off and did a little something called Hobbs and Shaw, with Jason Statham, which y'all can imagine I initially didn't like because I didn't like the fact that Jason Statham went from good villain in franchise to, you know, good old buddy in franchise. just doesn't really work for me. But if you watch my Fast 8 review, upon subsequent watches, now I've kind of came around to the fact that it is what it is at this point. I've seen every one of these movies that Jason Statham has appeared in at least three to four times, so now I'm just kind of used to it. So Hobbs and Shaw, you know, kind of a little more comfortable with it. And you cannot deny that these two have chemistry. And I think that's what carries the movie here. Because overall, when you're watching this movie, do we need it? Is it necessary? All that good shit? No. But is it a good action movie? Is it a fun time? Yes. You know, it's a little more as crazy as it sounds, because we basically have a superhero in this movie. Grounded? Just just a little bit. Not exactly. I mean, you get all your crazy over-the-top scenes, but again, more in line, I think, with like five and sixes groundedness rather than, you know, or even eights, now that I've rewatched this and realized that, as compared to at least what I, you know, my standpoint of what I like groundedness-wise and like what I've taken away from the franchise, as compared to seven and nine, where it's a little bit too ridiculous to even have fun with, yeah, like they, they do a pretty good job. And there's a lot more bare bones, I think, fighting, which I enjoy, and Statham is always good at that, and The Rock, you know, isn't great at that kind of thing, or even necessarily good. You know, he's he's passable. But what makes him elevate to good is it's just The Rock. He's a big motherfucker. You know, he does have some talent from his ring work. You know, a lot of that's, you know, grapple moves and throw around, but just bare knuckle type shit. It does work, and it's also because it's The Rock. The Rock is The Rock, and also The Rock is huge, so you like seeing just a big motherfucker mauling people. That There's some type of weird enjoyment to that, at least for me, and I think that sentiment gets echoed all around, honestly. But good fight scenes for the most part. You know, it's, I'm a martial arts fan. I love great fight scenes, but I got to take everything you know, with a grain of salt, given where it's coming from. As far as, like, Hollywood movie fight scenes, this is okay. Not that bad. Good enough fight scenes. I enjoyed the comedy in this movie. A lot of that comes from just the banter back and forth between its two leads. Jason Statham and The Rock. Honestly, say, you know, there's a good portion of it that feels just, like, genuinely, like, funny. 
but most of it feels like the same shit you'd hear from any two guys ragging on each other. Probably about 80% of it. And then, you know, the little 20% is where they touch it up, put a little extra sprinkle on it. It's like, okay, I like the little touch or the way they spun that, you know, rather than like the same old, you know, warehouse type humor you hear from guys hanging out, talking shit to each other. But most of it is that. It's just that. Like, I've heard this joke said a million times, but for some reason, the delivery and the way they bounce it off of each other and the chemistry that they have with each other really makes it hit, really makes it land, and really makes it funny, one way or another. Speaking of funny, I think the cameos they had in this movie were really good, and they were pretty funny. And more of, for the most part, just like, oh, shit, like, look who's in this, and it puts a smile on your face. But still, there was funniest moments. You had Kevin Hart in this, which I thought was amazing. Just seeing him initially, like when he first turned around, you're like, holy shit, it's Kevin Hart. And you already had a smile on your face. And, he, you know, he's wanted to become a part of the team. You had Ryan Reynolds and, uh, you know, he had his little couple moments. He was funny. You know, the moment in the diner with the daughter talking about, you know, Game of Thrones and, like, The Rock even playing off of it, just like – like he knows nothing, I mean, you know nothing, Jon Snow, all that good shit. As a Game of Thrones fan, you definitely enjoy that. But who isn't? You know, the world is at this point, or at least was. You know <laughs> how it ended. Ugh! Killed a lot of us, but it's just fun pop culture references and just fun in general all the way around. But it doesn't just go as far as the cameos go, like the added pieces. I think Idris Elba is solid in this movie. Is he amazing? Again, no, he's not amazing. But there's something about Idris Elba, even when he's phoning it in, he's such a, like a fun actor to just great actor when he wants to be, that he just brings that extra little ingredient that sets the movie off. Even when he's not, you know, just absolutely murdering the role, which, which I wish he would have like dialed it up a notch here, but it's more him just having fun and he has this few moments where, you know, he plays it serious. But it just doesn't, like it doesn't, really hold a candle to what I think he can do in a menacing villain role. But as far as in a Fast and the Furious movie, it's right par for the course, and he does a great job of it. And he's easily, like, one of the better villains in this franchise. He might be in the running for my favorite. If you want to get technical, I've came to the realization that The Rock in 5, if you want to call him a villain... Because, you know, he's the cops that are after him. But he's not your flat-out, like, you know, crime boss type villain. You know, these underground street racer villain, whatever the fuck you want to call him, that these guys get into it with. But The Rock in Fast Five was the best. As far as, like, foe coming after him with a purpose, charisma, The Rock nailed it. He was the best. But if you want to take away the cop aspect, and obviously The Rock became a good guy. But then again, all these villains become good guys, right? I even thought Idris Elba was at the end of the movie, where he was, they were, you know, where Jason Statham and him were used to be cool. It was like almost like a take my hand type moment. I rolled my eyes so hard. I'm like, come on! Not every villain has to be good by the end of these movies. God damn. But other than The Rock, my man, like, he might be my second favorite villain. So props up there. Again, not amazing, but for this franchise, definitely I get a leg up for having maybe my favorite villain. He's, he's solid. Idris Elba's cool, and the superpower S shit surprisingly works because he legitimately feels like a superhero. I heard people bouncing, you know, this shit off the wall. Like, they were just like, yeah, like, this shit's crazy. They got a superhero on this movie. I'm like, man, they probably didn't go that far, did they? You sit down and watch this movie, and you're like, bro, it's a a superhero and you could be like oh well i mean he doesn't technically have any special powers and it's like bro what are you fucking talking about how many fucking superheroes have you seen where they were normal at one point and they just get genetically enhanced it's not like all superheroes are just born with power no he literally has a part of his back that's been ripped open and they're messing with his genes or what the fuck ever and they fucking splice him back together to where he has a chip in his mind even take it down to something as simple as batman batman doesn't have any powers he just wears a suit and has gadgets this dude definitely qualifies as a fucking superhero dude do not play with me <laughs> this dude's a superhero cool enough anyways other than idris you got vanessa kirby who i absolutely love you know again movie like this you're not going to get some groundbreaking performance from her that she's definitely capable of doing in drama and dramatic roles but She's solid as the sister. I definitely enjoy her. And I enjoyed, you know, the whole ending where they go back to, you know, 
The Rock's home with all the Samoans and all that shit. You even had, I'm not a big wrestling fan, at least of, you know, this time when this guy came in, but The Rock's cousin, Roman Reigns, being there, kind of seeing him in the background. Uh, God damn it. <laughs> oh, my God. I know at any other time, the, the main, like, brother or whatever that punches The Rock in the face, and he's like, you abandoned us, that dude. He's always solid in movies. It was cool to see him, and... The whole family, it just, it really did reek of like what you would imagine The Rock's family looking like. So it was definitely a cool vibe. And them just being like, we're kicking it old school. And the whole ending, you know, again with the unbelievability, The Rock's like holding on chains on the tow truck, you know, and they're about to fall off a cliff, all that good shit. It's fun enough, it's stupid fun. And then, of course, the ending, I liked how they took down Idris Elba, where it was like, I'll take a punch for you if you can, you know, get a hit on him. And, you know, Idris is trying to time up shit as a perfect machine, and The Rock comes through with that big-ass, massive headbutt. It's good. It's fun, it's fun times. There's nothing wrong with this movie. Overall, though, I guess it comes down to do we need it? And the fact that at this point in the franchise, I'm already experiencing some fatigue due to the movies around it. The fact that you add in one that's not a part of the direct story, I just don't have as much use for it. But at the same time, though, I can't count it out as some movie that just isn't worth my time at all because they do bring enough fun to it. And Dwayne The Rock Johnson is the funnest part of this franchise going forward it's the person i look forward to the most so he brings enough to it to where it warrants it but there is a part of me that i feel like subconsciously deducts it in ways i shouldn't because i want to stick to the main storyline because i'm already fatiguing the fuck out why are we going now sideways if we're already getting fatigued if this was like in the mix of when it was hot like after five they dropped this and then they came out with six it was like damn like oh yeah let's see what's over here but by the time i get here it's like even the new movies that come out, I'm like, not rolling my eyes. I'm like, I'm going to see it. It's Fast and the Furious. But I'm not so excited to where I need to venture off and see a side story. So I do hold it back probably almost unnecessarily for that reason. But at the same time, I don't hold it back too much because I do have a damn you know fun time with this movie. This is a good movie. I enjoy it. Borderline really good, if not really good. Definitely worth watching. Hobbs and Shaw is a fun time, and the biggest reason why is not just the characters and actors they added. It's the chemistry of its two leads. You can watch Jason Statham and Dwayne The Rock Johnson bullshit with each other over and over and over again. Honestly, like if you remove some of the plot and the action and just have them just bare bones in a room sometimes talking shit to each other, it might even be better because that's honestly the highlight of that move, this movie. And I think they knew that when they saw in Fast 8 the way these motherfuckers just bounce shit off each other, they immediately were like, hang on a second, like, we got something here. This isn't just some shit where Statham's character, Shaw, is forced to be with them. We could maybe push this and maybe start as a joke, and the next thing you know, they're like, oh, shit, we're making a motion picture. And who can blame them? We want more rock in this franchise, even if he doesn't want to be a part of the direct story. And what him and Jason Statham got, it's definitely magic. But would it be better suited if they had, you know, their own fucking movie? If they would have kind of just luckily kind of blossomed into a movie together and like damn look at this buddy cop movie where they're not Hobbs and Shaw you know in a Fast and the Furious movie makes you wonder but we can't all get that lucky we got what we got still solid Hobbs and Shaw good shit Fast 9 is next and then after that people I'm done I can't believe it I'm done finally done until Fast X 11 movies in the bag here we go almost over with love you guys let me know what y'all thought like share subscribe is Hobbs and Shaw worthy of the Fast and the Furious franchise or is it just an unnecessary spinoff let me know peace